Welcome to a brand new LeBron James video. As you know on this channel we are doing a 23 part series collection of 23 LeBron James videos in 23 weeks and today we have the 2020 Los Angeles Lakers, the NBA bubble championship roster who goes in depth on LeBron James and their true thoughts on the King. Each Lakers player from the roster as well as the coach tells their opinion on LeBron James and it's a really interesting video. If you think that you will enjoy it, please help me out by hitting that like button, subscribe if you are new, and hit that notification so you are updated when a new video drops. Of course, if you've missed any of the other episodes within this series, there's a playlist on the top right of your screen, and also linked down below in the description, so be sure to check it out to see all the other episodes that we have done thus far. And of course, full video footage and credits are on the screen right now, and linked down below in the description, and this video would not be possible without the use of these clips, but this video has been edited to make it a whole brand new video in itself, but of course, be sure to check out the footage and video credits linked down below in the description and on your screen right now, in their entireties. I don't want to keep you guys waiting, so without further ado, here are the 2020 Los Angeles Lakers on LeBron James. Talk about how he is as a player, a person, and just how he operates. He was doing Space Jam and the 6 a.m. workouts that yep. we went to go there. I'm doing that. I'm playing. And at this time is they don't even know my personality. I'm quiet. Yeah, yeah. I'm just like, hey, on the court. Hey, strictly business. Stay in shape. Let's go. And then we go to Vegas. Braun has a, the pre a little before a camp workout. It was a whole new team. You know what I'm saying? So like, like Braun, we had like a players um, retreat in Vegas. So like we all like ate dinner together, we went out together, like we all had fun and it was just a good group. And what I love about him mostly is a lot of team bonding. You know, not just his on the court, but off the court as well. Like you said, his leadership role. <laughs> heavy ball. <laughs> but the way he does it, you know, he approaches every day um, with so much discipline. This is unbelievable. But, you know, being, for me, watching him, and his work ethic and what he do for his body and you know what he do on the court, what he do to to stay in shape is is uh top to none. I've never seen nobody work as hard as him. You know what I mean? Three, four hours before the game, mm. two, three hours after the game while we going and cold tub and he putting in work in the weight room, he getting treatment till two in the morning, you know, all those things and still being him. Brian yeah. gonna show you. He gonna talk, he's gonna put you in position, you know what I'm saying? As far as like, you know. Making sure everybody on the same page he on. You know, he, he's like top professional guy, you know. Saying I learned a lot from him as far as like being a leader, you know, and being like vocal to your teammates and how to do that, you know. Uh, you know, he helped me like, you know, in that aspect a lot as well. On the court, off the court, around the game, nobody works as hard. Mm. So I can see how he can play, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, that long. Anytime we watch film as a team, you know, he'll he'll come in and like he won't say anything for a while, and he'll see something, and he'll just like stop it and start talking. And he talks exactly like a coach. He's like, "Well, if X two comes over this 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 block, and then uh, X five flashes here to the paint, and the backside should be free." I'm like, "The yeah, dude talks like he's been an NBA coach for like a decade already, and he's he's got a head coaching job." I used to hear things like Bill Russell was a was a player coach one year. Yeah. And I was like, how do you hire you a player coach? How's that a thing? But after going to the Lakers, I understand how a player could be a player coach. Right. Because just the, the not only playing the game, when LeBron plays the games, he's thinking the game too. And he's low-key thinking for two other players also. You know, he's all for team. He's all for, for family. You see it, you know, his day life as a father and his role in his, his own family's life. So he kind of has that same role and mindset that he takes on with his team. Uh, you know, he just told me, you know, to come in and stay focused, you know, do what I do, uh, you know, to tell me that they got me. And, you know, what um, better words can you get from LeBron as a, you know, 19-year-old? So, uh, you know, try to model my game after every day. It's, it's been great. You know, like I say, whether it's a team dinner, whether it's a bowling event, whether it's, you know, going to the club, I mean, it's always something where it's, everyone's included. And I feel like that is a bigger reason why his teams are successful. Chemistry is Chemistry and fit are the most important things to win a championship, right or wrong, what would you say, right? It, it's more important than talent. You have to have talent. You could put, you could have If it don't fit, don't matter. Yeah. It wasn't until we're on the road and you start the gambling table. Yeah. And you get on the gambling table, you start talking to trash, you start yeah, getting yeah, yeah. to go, and we went to Phoenix. Uh -huh. And I threw a little uh, team bonding yeah. experience. Yeah. And once I threw a team bonding experience, they're like, oh, whoa, okay. Yeah. I see what JD is. For sure. You knew you was gonna win it? You knew y'all was gonna that win it? That year knew we was gonna win it. Before we went in the bubble, we knew we was gonna win. 
We was loaded. We were no number way. one seed. It was us with the Clippers. We went one or two with the Clippers, but like they knew like it was going to be between us two. And we knew it was going to be, you know what I'm saying? Like we knew that it was the mutual respect for each other. Kawhi and Paul George were playing at a high level. Yeah, um, uh, I wanted to be in the Western Conference Finals, LA, LA, mm -hmm. at home. Obviously, COVID had, had yeah, a bubble. Yeah. And then once they lost to Denver, Denver was good, but they weren't beating us they weren't. at that time. Uh -huh. AD and Braun were playing at such a high level. We had the best two players at the time, Braun and AD. They was from another level. We had the complimentary guys. We were so locked in. It was, mm -hmm. this, this shit happened with Kobe. It was like, you know, we got to get it done for him. We was one of the teams that was pushing more for the bubble because we knew we had the best chance of winning. Mm -hmm. And we knew no matter what, who stepped on the court with us, we was going to win. So we get there and we can find our rooms for maybe two days. Right? They come in and test and everything. Right. Like, no practice, no nothing. You were in your room. We were there for almost three months. How long were you guys there? 96 days, 95 nights. I will never forget it. Oh, <laughs> you got it down. Did you have down to the hours and minutes? 96 days, 95 nights. I will never forget it, man. Almost three months. Yeah. That's crazy. And so we sitting there and it's like, man, what do we do? And we actually had a meeting and God was like, what y'all want to do? Y'all oh, want to shut real. this shit down? I was ready to walk That's away. I, I, had called, I had called my wife and called my mom and told them that um, I was probably headed home. Um, Why? Because there was no plan. Mm -hmm. After we decided to do what we did and we boycotted the games, what's next? There's some other issues that needs to be dealt with as well. What is our plan? And at that moment when I walked out, we sat there and talked for two, three, four hours, and there was still no plan. But when you're dealing with a, a group of a lot mm -hmm. of uh, emotional, emotional uh, you know, a lot of ego, a lot of guys that's passionate about themselves and, and what they believe in, then it's hard to figure out a plan at that very moment. Yeah. So it was best for me to step out. And everybody was looking at fucking LeBron. <laughs> I, I needed time to digest it. So I walked out, I was ready to walk away, but also I understand that it wasn't just squarely about me. Yeah. So I needed a moment to, to digest the whole situation to actually sleep on the whole situation. And um, and I was able to do that and, and wake up the next day and, and and had a plan of what I thought could work for us going forward. CJ's hosting the, the damn meeting and they like, what y'all wanna do? So you got every team in this room. And once they said, all right, everybody vote, we are gonna let y'all talk to y'all team for about 10 minutes and we'll come back in. We'll say, everybody say what y'all wanna do. Majority, that's what we doing. When I say, <laughs> when I crazy, say, bro. nobody discussed. All motherfuckers did was look to us like, <laughs> whoa. Hey, what, what the Lakers doing? doing, man? What you doing, Six? We, we, we get on a we get on a on a call with like our people, with like well his team, and they like, man, look, this would be a good look for the league. Like, y'all gotta stay. Ron say we stand. No other vote matters. That's the most locked in I've ever been on basketball. Mm. I got to say that by far. Do you like, think because it started the at the top with Braun them? Yeah, it for sure. Down through for the sure. For bubble, sure. So. You know, uh, uh, that LeBron effect is a real thing. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, he's going to up your play or you not going to play with one or, one, or the other, one or the other. Just always have to be prepared um, for any opportunity that's presented when you're on the court with LeBron. Because, like I said, he sees plays that we don't see. Everything he does is strategic. Mm -hmm. Every move he make, um, and then some of the just the outlandish stuff he does on the court. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. Like LeBron will know. Like he'll he'll correct. Like if if you're in game 50 of the season, right, and you're you're on like your fifth game of the the five trip five game trip and on the East Coast swing or something, and, and some assistant coach actually accidentally said we're gonna weak somebody instead of strong them. And LeBron, you'll be like, he's definitely not paying attention back there. Something, something, yada, yada. And then he'll be like, he'll just say, like, under his breath, he'll look up and be like, no, 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 he's a weak. He's a weak. Left hand, right? And everybody else was just kind of like in the flow and rhythm of going with it. You're like, yeah, okay, yeah, we're just going to send him that way. And then we're like, oh, wait, yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. We are supposed to go that way. I, I, I'm a junkie with, with studying the tape, and um, I can't get enough of it. Uh, you know, I like to do it. Uh, it's probably too long at times, but there were some times early in the season where, um, you know, the film was running a little bit long. I knew I had to cut it, and, and he kept just answering questions, like asking questions and, and putting guys. 
hey, what about this? And if we do this, they got to, you know, they do that. We got to do this. And, you know, hey, coach, what do you think about this spacing? And he was so engaged in, in these film sessions, even, you know, after the first five, 10 minutes, which is where most people, and most players, you know, that, that's their time to check out. Right. Um, he kept it going 20, 30, 40, 45 minutes into the film session. And when, when, you're, when you're lying in the locker room, is that attentive to what's going on? The rest of the guys are too. Like, oh, you need to be there. You need to be there. We need to do this. If we're going to win this series, we need to change this. Right. And he's a major part of that. So I, I, I definitely think like he's more of a player coach than just a player when it comes to just the cerebral part of the game. Do you think people take it for granted with I, how great he is? I definitely think people take it for granted how great he really is. Just the things that he's done in going, what is it, nine? He, he went nine finals in a row, or nine out of ten. Mm -hmm. Like, eight in a row. Eight in a row. And then if you look ten. and if you look at the, some of those teams, you're like, who else did he have right. to really help him? He didn't have like any super team. He had a couple maybe if you count uh Dwayne Wade and but it, it was a lot of a lot going on for him to still make it to the finals in those years. He should have won. I mean, this is I don't know if this is a hot topic or not. I thought he should have won the MVP this year. Uh Giannis is you know how good he is, but uh LeBron and you're seventeen doing this thing, man, and everybody his whole career telling him he couldn't win in the West, you know, he's playing in the Cleveland, you know, he's, he's getting free wins, yada, yada, and then he does this. I don't know what else people want, man. Dude's, yeah, dude's, dude's amazing. When you see that man and him being a professional, like, you're gonna fall in line because it's a certain excellent in standards and, and you don't wanna let somebody down that cares so much about winning and, and this, like, you wanna be part of that too. He has, mm -hmm. he has the greatest career in NBA history. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just seeing how he operated, seeing how he did it for 20, said, I've done 14 years. Him to do it to 20, because it's 21 for him coming up. Um, and every night, he's, he's ma his magnifying glass is the biggest one in the world. In the world. Um, so for him to have that since 18 years old to now 38, you know, Impressive. is the craziest thing. And, you know, you can, I can try to give his guy as much flowers as I can, but there's, there's, not, there's not enough flowers in the world to give what he's mm -hmm. accomplished. Just him being consistent. That's the thing that sets him apart, you know. He's not lifting crazy amounts of weights no more because he doesn't have to. Mm -hmm. But what he does do is he's consistent every morning. He's up, he's getting his massage, he's getting stretched, he's getting his treatment, he's getting his weight room where he's lifting, you know, certain weights for certain days. And by doing that, he's strengthening and those smaller stuff, yeah. muscles because that's the biggest thing that people don't understand. Strong. The big muscles around the big people see. The small muscles is what you mm -hmm. need because that's for endurance. And that's why he's been able to endure for so long because he has trained up those small muscles to where now they're just as if not even stronger than those big muscles that you see. So. For him to be able to jump the way he's jumping, for him to be able to move and have that fast twitch, that's because he's steady training those little muscles. Braun is just, you know, he's he's been one of my idols growing up since I like been been wanting to be a part of the league. Just being able to play with him and win a championship with him was like amazing. And I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe if you are new, and let me know down below in the comment section what you thought of the video. And here are two new videos I think that you will also enjoy if you enjoyed this, and I'll catch you guys there.